And I was just like, y'all need a hashtag here. Start giving numbers. So basically, for people who don't know, um, LL started the hashtag publish what publishing paid me or publishing paid me rather. And it came out of the whole thing with everybody putting up these black boxes when a lot of us were out in the street protesting and things like that in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. And we don't think that black people should be beaten. And if you notice, if you remember, after all those black squares came up, there was a lot of people that showed up like with receipts, <laughs> like, hey, I work for you. And you know what? You're racist. So a lot of people were, you know, take into task. And then what started to happen was people started revealing what they made and what was going on behind the scenes. And slowly but surely that came to publishing. Yeah. And I think the biggest discrepancy, and help me out with this, Al, you, we, I just named N.K. Jemison, who is a triple Hugo award winner. No other human, not black woman, black person, woman, human, no other human being has ever won that highest science fiction award three years in a row. And she did. And come to find out her last book after winning that award, uh, still her advance was like an eighth of what some people were making out the gate. Um, I don't yeah. remember the exact numbers. Maybe you can help, uh, clarify that for people in the audience. I don't, I, I remember some of the numbers and it, it's wild because uh, the homie Tochi Onyabuchi, who uh, books, has also amazing books. War Girls um, is one that I really enjoy. The sequel is out, um, but he was sort of the catalyst of all things. So I, I like the, the, the hashtag came um, out of like my frustration. Like you said, I was just like, y'all need a hashtag here. Start giving numbers because he had tweeted y'all going allies, you know, white people, y'all are going to need to start being honest about these numbers if we're going to do this equality thing, you know, with pay. And everybody was on his tweet and they were like, oh yeah, I, you know, I'm here for it. I want to do it. So forth and so on. And they were like, you know, in solidarity with what he had said, but no one was putting that number. No one was saying anything. And so, you know, for a while, I'm like, irritated and I'm bringing this to the surface. I'm like, y'all said that y'all wanted to do it, but ain't nobody doing it. So what's the problem? And then the, the hashtag happened. And then, you know, he's got people who are crunching numbers and putting things in spreadsheets, you know, to hand to publishing. Like this has been a thing that black authors have known, but it's one of those secrets where you don't talk about it out loud. So nobody knows, knows, but then you see like, N.K. Jemison, who uh, science fiction and fantasy is, I, it's called niche, but I mean, when you got like, you know, Lord of the Rings running around and Game of Thrones running around, I don't, I think it's about as niche as comics right now. It maybe used to be that, but that's not the case anymore. Um, who doesn't break a hundred thousand dollars with her advance. And you have somebody who's this no name, nobody knows who they are. Uh, you know, it's just a random white dude, honestly, $800,000. And it's just for an unproven book, no sales, no awards, nothing. And it just blows your mind, you know, cause you knew it was happening, but to know that it's to this degree, like particularly in YA, you'll have black women writing about black girls getting like less than a quarter of what a white author writing about black girls gets. And it's like, exactly. what's, what's the difference in story here? Nothing. This is the more authentic story, but it's not the one that you get the money for. Unless of course you write about the black pain narrative, which we do need books about that, but that's the one that- Not constantly. Probably, yeah, not constantly, please. I'm, I'm and a also little bit tired of it. The person, the person you were talking about, I believe is Chip Keek, uh, Chip Cheek. I looked it up. Sorry. He, uh, he received an 800,000 advance dollar advance for his debut book, but he's in, he said, I'm still in shock about it, but I'm more shocked to see the numbers like the extraordinary Jasmine Ward who yep. 
you know, even her, her Savage the Bones won the NBA National Book Awards and her publishing company didn't want to give her a hundred thousand for her next novel. Nope. Won the National Book Award, was read by the president of the United States, recommended, you know, by the highest office in the land. And you have to fight to clear six figures, low six figures. And it's just it, it, in the same breath, they just throw in money. And it, there's this thing where, you know, advances take a lot of things into account. Publishers are thinking, how how much can I, how many of these copies can I sell? You know, how universal is the story? And it just goes to show what publishing does or does not view as capable of being a universal tale. Exactly. And, and, and it, the thing is, you would think, you would think in 2020 on Beyonce's internet, after Black Panther and Into the Spider-Verse, we wouldn't still be having these problems. But I did also notice that there was also a gender discrepancy there on top of everything else. Oh yeah. It, it, it's always, if you have any intersections, it's gonna hit you just that much harder just because it can. And it's what's, what's really wild to me is- Rox Roxanne Gay said while, that. Yes. It's like it, it, for, for, for what's wild to me is for, for a while, publishing likes to tell this, this lie to itself that, you know, we're just following the market. You know, we're just, we're, we're, we're trying to make money. It's about money. It's about money. And I'm like, well, for years now, studies have shown that the highest reading demographic is black women and girls. So if you were actually trying to trace the market, what you're offering would look very different. That's just what you tell yourself and tell other people who aren't as privy to, you know, what's going on behind the scenes. Right. So it's like, no, yeah, there would be now, a lot more books with black women and girls as the focus. Do you think for you, the numbers have changed or have you heard people say since the revealing of publishing paid me, have any more advances or things gone out or has it still been everything's frozen because of COVID? I think there has been some change, not as much as I would like. There's an, it's never enough to be honest. Um, and it's never fast enough. People are always like, oh, it's going to take time. But you know the quote from um, the late, great Mr. Baldwin about how much time do you need? Um, mm -hmm. But I have had people tell me that they were able to bring up publishing paid me with regards to negotiations for their books, um, new books that are being contracted. Some people were talking about it for their jobs. You know, I was able to negotiate for my salary because of that. There was somebody tweeted to like, um, to on, on the hashtag about how his, it was a black author, his old contracts were renegotiated because of publishing pay me. So oh, it is amazing. having an effect. Um, hmm. Is it having the effect that it could have? If people were actually genuine, no, it's not as far as it needs to be, not by a long shot. Um, but then you still have people like throwing money at stuff that was announced today, and I'm not going to mention her by name, but multi book, multi million dollar contract. And I, for one, am, I remain salty about it. I will know, I, I will be Lot's wife about this for a while. You said lots of wife. Also, when they put money behind things like Mario Lopez playing Colonel Sanders. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, yes, it's nice that you have this, you know, ex um, what's it called? Expendable income? I don't know. I work with words Disposable. for a living. Disposable. <laughs> yes, there you go. Thank I'm you. just a writer. I don't know. I, I, I do words, but there, there's a whole team that helps me not sound ridiculous. Um, <laughs> But when you have that and you could throw it at, but I'm uh, at the same time, I'm looking at, so you had this in your budget, but you, you can't pay black and brown creatives for that. Okay. All right. Cause every, you're, everybody's adults. You're going to do what you want. You're going to put money behind what you want to put them behind. You can make exactly. all the platitudes and excuses you want, but at the end of the day, you're going to do what you, if, if it's not a priority, it's not going to get done. And if it is a priority, it will. I have seen books go from, you know, acquired to on the shelf in under a year, if it was a priority, you know, so. Absolutely.